Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa and thank you for joining me. We're gonna be doing just random plant chores today, repottings, and I have some pole extensions I wanna try and get done today too. We'll see how many I can get through. My goal is to get through at least three or four plants today for the video. And we're out here in my dining room because the plant room isn't finished yet. There's not really enough room in there to bring my table and filming stuff because the back wall, they have about a foot of flooring to finish because we ran out of flooring. We didn't order enough. So the last box will get here Thursday next this coming week. And then we're having them come back by on Friday to finish it up. So it shouldn't take them more than like an hour to finish. And then I can move that big shelf back and kind of fix my plants in there. It feels so much better in my plant room. I was watering my cabinet last night and I'm like, this is nice. I can sit plants on the floor. They're not gonna fall. <laughs> And I can already tell I just love it so much more. If you have not given me a follow yet, I would love to have you hit that little subscribe button. And let me show you a sneak peek of what the plant room's looking like, and we'll get started on the repottings. I just wanna give you a little bit of a sneak peek in here. Look at the flooring. It looks so good. I ended up putting some like plastic mat down to protect the flooring, flooring from all of my moss pools because when I water these guys, I make a mess sometimes. Oh, let me just go in here and show you. Look at these beauties. I haven't set my mother lights up yet. I gotta get those connected. And I don't know where I put the other outlet timer. I'm gonna have to look for that, but I need to get those set up so that I can get more light on these plants. Everything else is pretty much kind of the same. They have to finish the flooring back there so the shelf is way out. And yeah, I'll get that pushed back. And then I want to completely like redo this shelf and I just have too many plants in here. I gotta get that light set back up too. I'm hoping with the carpet out, it will um, be a little less humid, a little less sticky feeling. <laughs> and a little less moisture retentive and more airflow, I guess, more circulation. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. But yeah, I can't wait to like rearrange and get my plants and stuff kind of growing and set up for the summer. I still have lots of repotting and stuff to do in here. Over here, I did need to do this one. So I think I might take this one out because I need to change the substrate and add an extension on. So I might do this one. I think that will probably be an easy one to go ahead and do. This is my silver stripe philodendron. It's so pretty. This one's actually growing on the inside of the pole. I have to fix that. So yeah, let's take this one and get started on this guy first. I gathered all my supplies here that I need. I have my moss pole mix my fertilizer, I have my water, Super Thrive. I pre-moistened some sphagnum moss and I have a couple pots to choose from and I have a pole. And we will get started. Oh, you know what? I forgot a soil bin. <laughs> I gotta go get a soil bin. I like dumping out old soil in a designated bin so that I don't make a mess everywhere. At least it helps. <laughs> So again, this is my silver stripe philodendron. This started as a tiny plant for me and I had it in a basket and it was growing small leaves. Um, it was just kind of like sticking straight up and I didn't like the way it was growing in a basket. So I, when I say basket, I mean just like a four inch pot. And so now I have it climbing and I love it much better, but it needs an extension. And I don't like the substrate. I believe, I'm pretty sure this is still the other soil. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'll probably end up doing, I'll either probably end up doing a four inch like this. I have the bigger ones. These are the new pots that, I, that I'm starting to use. 
because they don't have the side holes. They do, but they're kind of on the side down here. You can't really see them. Um, but these are a six inch, but I think this is probably gonna be too big. So I have a four inch and I like these pots too. These are the Repop Me plastic pots and I do like these. I'm gonna repot first and then I will work on the extension. So today's the weekend, it's Saturday today. I actually haven't filmed all week because they did the flooring. Wait, when were they here? Yeah, they did, they did the flooring earlier in the week and then I edited yesterday and got like, and the day before that I moved all the plants back in. And so I haven't filmed a video all week. So it's nice to like actually sit down and film again. I think we got some raw issues going on. I was worried about that. And it has plenty of roots, I think, in the moss, so it's fine. I think, uh, I think the raw issues with all the plants in the substrate, we know the story with all this. I feel like rot doesn't even phase me anymore because pretty much all of my plants that were potted using this mix just has rotted. It stinks because I just watered a nematode, so anything that I do repot, it's not gonna have nematodes in it. So I am gonna order more though, cause I did film a video on nematodes. Like I had filmed me watering them in and then I accidentally deleted the footage off my memory card when I was cleaning it out. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm gonna order more and water more in cause I do feel like they are helping fungus gnats. I was using BTI, you know, the mosquito dunks. But for some reason, I feel like the orchid bark I was using or that I bought was had, had some gnat larvae. Nematodes, I'm gonna see how it goes uh, over the summer because they're gonna help with the thrips too. Like any uh, larvae that is in the soil, they'll eat and attack. So I'm gonna see how the nematodes do with the gnat situation. If I still see gnats, then I'm gonna, you know, definitely water more in. I just don't think I used enough. I did 10 million this round and I did the 10 million in five gallons, which I feel like 10 million would have been enough to do, but we'll see, like I said. I'm probably gonna order another 10 million just so I can refilm that and water more in, especially any plants that I end up repotting in that time. I'm using Osmocote. I think I'm gonna be switching back to using Osmocote. I, I only have like that much of the new fertilizer left, but I was talking to someone about it and I feel like I've had so many issues with my plants, you know, with the rot, with fungal issues, and it's probably not related at all to the fertilizer, but I feel like Osmocote just worked so well for me last summer that I feel like I just wanna go back to it. I might actually get some cow mag to use in addition, just because Osmocote doesn't have calcium in it. Um, but I think that's my plan with the fertilizer. At least that's what I'm gonna try to do. I love my moss pole mix. It's just so aerated. I don't have to worry about raw issues anymore. I have noticed my moss pole mix dries fairly quickly. The plants that I have repotted into it. I haven't repotted all of my moss poles in it yet, obviously. There's, I'm still waiting to change the soil when I go to like chop or extend them. But uh, yeah, it, it dries pretty quickly in my environment. So definitely uh, keep that in mind. It is very aerated, so it dries pretty quickly. All right. 
I'm gonna water in a little Super Thrive. A guesstimate. And for the extension, this is the new 3.0 pole. And I know I said I wasn't gonna use these anymore, but they are supposed to fit on the regular 2.0, the medium size. It's supposed to just be able to attach like the other one. And I'm running out of these ones. I don't have that many left. So I do have more of the three. So what I'm gonna do for plants that I don't plan on like, I feel like it's gonna take a while for this one to fill out this pole. And I feel like, I don't know how large the leaves on this plant really get. It's just more of like climbing per se. I feel like I'm not gonna be chopping this plant like I would like a, a different climbing philodendron. So I feel like this pole is still fine. Um, and I have them, I might as well use them. Even though I wasn't the biggest fan of all the clasping, I think I'm just gonna let it grow over top. I'm not gonna worry about uh, clipping each little snap around the vines. Because I think I have, I have two, three, I have three up here that are climbing, and then I have a lot of smaller ones down on the bottom. You can see I'm still not a fan. I don't know why I have so much trouble clasping this shut. I don't know. Okay, we will be finished clasping in three, two, one. And we're done. <laughs> that took a while to clasp all those. Goodness gracious, okay. So this little leaf grew on the inside of the plastic. I'm gonna try and squeeze it out without breaking it. I'm squishing the little leaf. Okay. <laughs> so I want to fill in the top part with moss. Uh, how much do I want to fill? Okay, I need to fill a little bit. They just push right in. Okay. So we have the new three on top of the 2.0 and it fits right in there. So all we're gonna do is add our moss, which I'm gonna have to like squeeze through here and add some in. It's nice that the two different poles can connect though. I do like that. In case you change your mind, say you really like the open front ones and you've already have some on the regular two, you can just add the 3.0 on it and it'll grow up and then you can eventually like take the poles apart and prop. So I do like that they're interchangeable, I guess. Okay, I had to give my camera a little break. I got the extension on like, here and so for this i have to insert the moss 
after I build the pole, which I personally don't like doing. I would rather put the moss in first. But these little things are so hard for me to close. I don't know why I struggle with that so much. I don't know. I refuse to undo them again. <laughs> I'm just gonna jam it in there. I'm not gonna fill this one all the way to the top with moss just because um, I just don't feel like doing that right now. So I'm just gonna fill a little bit up here with moss. But yeah, these two poles fit about the same amount of moss, I would say. I'm gonna get this top vine anchored kind of back on the pole here some. And have one there, there. Yeah, let's add a little bit more. orchid moss lately that I've been getting from the big box store has been so stringy lately. I like it because it's inexpensive and it works, you know, but I feel like it's not always the best quality. Undone. Next time I go to fill this, I'll just add it in from the top and fill it up to the top. Okay, I think that's good for now. So I have it, you guys can't really see that much. I have it like up to here with moss. And that's how the extension is looking. It fits like right on there just like the other ones do. Once I get these extended, I'm like, oh, I don't have any room. <laughs> I have a lot of plants climbing, so yes. But at least now I can fit more plants on the floor. Like if I want to put plants around the plant shelf in there, they'll stand on the floor and because the carpet's not in there anymore. So that'll be nice. I can actually move more poles lower. Like, I guess a good thing about having flooring, I can actually use the floor for plant space. All right, I like it, it looks good. It's extended, it's repotted, it'll be happy and growing. It did have a little bit of root loss, you know, from the soil roots being a little bit rotted, but it's okay. I'm gonna wet some of the other moss. Okay, okie dokie. So, 
This is my dragon scale that I had repotted and upsized and some of the leaves still have a fungal issue. I can see them like that leaf in the front has something going on. So I think I'm just gonna cut off all the leaves and just regrow my dragon scale back in pawn. I just don't wanna take the chance. And I do have several dragon scale that are starting to come up in here. I have them labeled. This one is a dragon scale there. And then I have a lot of baby corms that haven't sprouted yet. But I think I might go ahead and transfer the baby corms in here and just let them grow up in, um, did I say stratum? I meant pond. I'm gonna pot them into La Chusa pond. I did use this already for an alocasia. Um, I'm gonna do the self water pot. This is not the La Chusa pot, it's the, it's just a Amazon brand. So that's the plan. So I need to rinse the dirt off of here when I go to unpot. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm actually, let me grab a pair of these gloves because I don't wanna spread anything when I go to touch this plant. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't know. <sighs> I hate wasting all this soil too. I might end up using this for one of my outdoor plants because I have some repotting to do with some of those. Okay, this is a corm that has a bad leaf. I'm gonna cut that off. And I have a little corm here. It does have a new growth point there. Have to rinse all of those. So that one's a goner. I don't trust any leaves on this one as well. That one's gone. That newest one might be okay. I might keep this one and just spray this one with a fungicide just in case. Okay, we'll have to rinse that one. And then this is the main stump that had a fungal issue. And I know for sure I wiped the leaves because I filmed a Instagram reel with this one and I was wiping the leaves with the glove. So I definitely spread something to this one. I got some corms though to take off one. Wasn't planning on finding more corms today. That's okay. Holy mackerel, look at the size of that corm. Oh, it's humongous. It's almost like some of these sad alocasia just went through some sort of root shock. I don't know, it's like their roots are fried almost, and I don't know. I don't know what happened to them.
All right, we will rinse this off. It's got a long root though. Um, to get all the dirt off the roots before we transfer them to the pond container. And then the one that's in stratum, I'm gonna rinse actually that one separately, rinse all the stratum off the roots and then all the little baby ones, we'll do that separately. And then we're gonna create like a big pot of dragon scale alocasia in pond. <laughs> so I'm gonna take these to my bathroom area uh, sink so we can rinse them. This strainer has been one of the like best purchases I made because it catches all the dirt in my sink. So I kind of want to do lukewarm water, not super cold to shock the root system. I just use copper fungicide by Bondi. Okay, we're just gonna spray. Okay, and kind of while that's drying, I'm going to rinse these other alocasia and stratum. Let's see. I'm just gonna set these in a little bit of water just so that their roots don't dry up. Okay, we're definitely gonna do this one. Actually, I have a couple here together. Okay, I have to show you this. This was the conjoined corm uh, when I had unpotted it. It has like a triplet there. It's like three pieces that are connected. So <laughs> that's so cool to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, what other dragon scale? We have, honestly, we just have this little one here. And I do have one more dragon scale in my um, cabinet, but it's already in soil, so I'm gonna leave that one in soil. So that was all the dragon scale that I have. So this is what we have going on. We have three that were in soil and then two that were in the stratum. And so we're gonna pot these all together in the pond and see how they do. We have our pond bag and our allocations that we rinsed. Now, I was told not to rinse pond when I had used it. I had used it to put an allocation in it already and it seemed rather dusty to me. So I'm kind of confused if I should rinse it or shouldn't rinse it. I don't know. I think, I think for right now, I'm just, I'm not going to rinse it. I'm just going to pour some in here, add the alocasia, and then fill this little reservoir with some water um, until this little meter gets 
Um, maybe not quite to the max line here and just see how it goes. Because Pawn is very new to me. We have our main stumpy stump. This one is the longest <laughs> here and it has the most extensive roots. So we are going to kind of just pile him right in the middle. The one that had the fungal issue, we're gonna do on one side here. And the other one that was in soil, we will do kind of down here on this side. And then the ones that were in stratum, we have this one. I'm gonna do kind of over here on this side. And then this other little baby one, we'll kind of do in this corner. So it kind of looks something like that. And I'll show you up close a little bit better too. And then all I want to do is just fill up with the pond. situating them a little bit. I honestly think I'm happy with the way this is positioned in here. Oh, it looks cute. It really does. It looks really stinking cute. So all I'm gonna do is just water. Can I get some of that dust off? The leaves. Might have added too much. Yeah, I think I did add a little too much. It's okay, we're gonna dump just a little bit out. I think that's good. So the little dial here will tell me the min and max. I think I want to keep it between the two levels, the water level, and then there's already nutrients in Lechuza Pond. I know there's slow release in here, so I don't have to fertilize right away. But I think I haven't decided if I want to try a different kind of um, fertilizer for plants I do put in pond, I might just end up keeping my Osmocote. And again, I think I'm gonna get some CalMag to supplement because this doesn't have calcium. And yeah, just see how they do. I'm not going to um, add anything additional right now. I'm just gonna use whatever is in here and just let them settle and see how they do and I'll keep you updated. Yeah. Next little project, I have a few propagations I wanna go ahead and add into some plants. This one I recently featured. This is my variegated Maranta that is growing back from flat mites. And I have this prop that is ready to get transferred. I was gonna let it hang out in stratum here a little bit longer, but it keeps going bone dry. This little vessel doesn't hold onto water very long. And I watered all of my stratum cups last night with my cabinet and it was like completely dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it so that it doesn't stress. I feel like it has plenty of roots to pop up in here. I forgot about these corms. I'm gonna have to plant those corms, my dragon scout corms. Oops, <laughs> I'll have to do that later. But I'm not gonna uproot this plant. It is happy, it is growing. I don't wanna mess with it. I don't wanna get her angry. 
I'm gonna put these gloves back on. So I am just going to make a little bit of room in the pot with my finger <laughs> and plop her right down in here. That's all I wanna do. This is gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna squeeze her in on the side here. The thing with props, especially with Maranta, is you wanna get the roots down far enough into the pot as possible. Because as the soil is drying, it dries from the top down. So the bottom part is gonna be where the moisture is. But the little roots from the prop could dry up. That's sometimes why they don't transfer, they just dry up before you water it again. So that's why I try to keep the area where the prop is a little bit more moist. And if you get the roots far enough down, it'll have that moisture where if you forget to water uh, and keep that area moist, if you just forget to do it, it'll still have moisture from down here at the lower part of the pot. So that's what I try to do. I try to get it down as low as I can. And this is just in stratum. Let's see. I'm gonna try and pluck the stratum right out into here. I'm gonna have to use this for a different prop though because this little thrifted vessel is so stinking cute. And I reuse my stratum for other props. As long as it doesn't get too mushy, I'll uh, reuse it. I actually took a bunch of props the other night when I was putting the plants back in there. Uh, when they finished the flooring that day, I was moving all the rest of the plants back in there. And I was like trying to put some plants back in there and then some plants were just like growing like wild. So I took a bunch of props and used, uh, I had like a whole container of leftover stratum and I used stratum for all of them. I just let it dry out. I just kind of leave it open like this, let it dry and then dump it into like my used stratum and then just reuse it. Okay, this has turned to mush like that because um, I guess it was really wet. So I wouldn't pot this into soil when it's this mushy because it could rot. So I'm just gonna take this over my sink and rinse the mush off and I'll be right back. Okay, it rinses off really easily. You can see um, it doesn't stick like moss does, like all those fine secondary roots that have developed, you're not gonna be pulling them off. So I have made my little hole down here on the edge so I'm just gonna get her down in here as far as I can and kind of fill in around. I'm squeezing her towards the middle, um, but just making sure she's down there good enough. And usually like my props do fine transferring. I do lose some, it happens just from going from one substrate to another. I, I've had better success lately with stratum. This is my first Maranta cutting in stratum, so I'll keep you updated on how it does. But normally my other stratum props do just fine transferring. So that was it, that was super easy. I added her into the front there. And this is all that's left of my variegated maranta, so hopefully I will get a nice full growing pot back here soon. I'm gonna let it live in this five inch for a while, and the soil's still pretty wet. Um, I don't feel like I would have to water. I don't think I have any water left in here. I had used nematodes recently, so I'm trying to keep the soil a little bit more moist for the first couple weeks is what it suggests. So I'm trying not to let them go completely all the way dry. But it still feels pretty wet, so it'll be fine. I'm watering tomorrow my plants and my plant room, so I might sprinkle a little bit more water in here tomorrow. That's it. I cannot wait. I can't wait to get my variegated Maranta growing back. I know she's gonna do so well. Okay, next plant is, this is my Neon philodendron, heteraceum. I haven't shown it in a while. You can see it's gotten some 
good growth on it lately. Like all the bright pop of orangey is new growth. So I had it in the other bedroom and it um, had a way less light so it didn't really grow and actually it got a little sad. So I've had it in my, back in my plant room now under better light for about um, a few, a couple months at least I would say. And it's, it's growing in better. So I did add props into this a while ago and they just kind of didn't do well. Again, it was just under low light and I feel bad about that. Uh, I do want to eventually take some more cuttings to fill in the top part because the top is very sparse. But this down here on the bottom is growing nicely now that it's gotten more light. I just need to fill the top back out. I do have some cuttings that I completely forgot about that were hiding in my plant room. <laughs> I have some Brazil and then some neon in here. So I'm just going to add the neon strands into the back part of this that's a little bit empty. And same process with the cuttings, making sure to get the roots down far enough. Now, since these are just in water, I have a lot of roots on the water props. I just have to be mindful that I need to keep that part of the soil a little bit more moist just so that they don't dry up because water roots are so different than soil roots and they can dry up easily. This little tool I get from a succulent toolkit off of Amazon and I just use it to make a little hole in the soil. It kind of pushes the soil around so you can get your cutting down in there. Oh, my husband's coming home. It's like I heard the garage door. That's okay, I'm almost finished filming. <laughs> so, I need to separate the Brazil because I don't want to add the Brazil. Um, so we got that lemon lime cutting. Actually, most of these might be lemon lime. Ooh, that's a Brazil. That's a lemon lime, that's a lemon lime, that's a lemon lime, and that's a lemon lime. So the rest of these I'm gonna stick back in here. We have three Brazil cuttings. I'm in the middle of growing my Brazil back too. I did that in a late night repotting cause it had rot. So um, whatever the stratum, kind of grows back roots, I'm going to add these little props in there with it. The main pot isn't doing that well. I'm thinking about just completely propping all the longer strands into stratum. And then once the longer strands grow enough roots, I will pot the longer strands back. I haven't decided, but the strands that I left in soil that had the rot, they just don't seem to be doing that well. So what I think I'm gonna do is, so I created a big hole down here I think I'm gonna pluck all these down in the same hole. That way I don't have a ton of separate areas to water. So I'm just gonna gather these all up with their roots here in a bunch. And some of these may not all make it and that's okay. So that's what I have to pot in there. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of gather the roots a little bit, just kind of twist them around just so I can pluck them in the hole a little bit better. And then we're gonna pop this entire thing down in this big hole that we made. Pop them right down in there. You just gotta get it far enough down. And then just take your fingers and fill in, move the soil around and just fill in the gaps. And some of the leaves towards the bottom will probably um, not make it and that's okay. And that's it. Like I have already added in all this and it's already filling out. And a lot of it, since I have had this in water for such a long time, a lot of the mid cuts already produced growth. So it shouldn't take them very long to start growing. All right, once all the dirt is filled back around on top, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. This plant does need a little bit of water since I'm gonna water 
my plants tomorrow anyway. I'm just gonna go ahead and water this one because she was pretty dry. And then probably midweek, probably like Wednesday, Thursday, I'll just keep an eye on the cuttings and how the soil feels around where the cuttings are. And if I feel like I need to add a little bit of water right here, then I will. All right, she's already starting to drain, so. That is her. To my plant room I just want to show you where I put the four plants that we did so right now the silver stripe I put right here on the shelf with some of my taller thickly poles and they're not directly under the light just because the shelf is pulled out from the wall but it'll be fine there for a week temporarily and that's kind of what the pole is looking like Got her all repotted. Fresh fertilizer. So that one will be loving life. And I did the same thing with, you know, the variegated heart leaf not too long ago. It's growing in so well. And the lemon lime philodendron is back up there. So it's gonna get some good light. It's not far from that grow light up there. So it's got lots of new growth coming in. So hopefully those props will do, will do well. And then let's see, the dragon scale. I ended up putting the vessel right here to kind of isolate it. And then I can kind of keep an eye on it. It's under the Barina light here. And yeah, it's weird having a plant in pond. I'm just so used to soil. So I just have to get used to it. And it's nice because I know like gnats and stuff aren't attracted to this, so that'll be nice. And there's the reservoir. I can just keep an eye on how low and full it is, and then I can just add more water to it. The variegated maranta I put down here, and I don't have the mother lights set up yet. I have to plug them in, but once I do, this area will get a lot more light, but I'm not too concerned about um, it being down here because they still get enough light. So hopefully that little cutting prop will do okay and I'll get my beautiful variegated Maranta back. She was so beautiful in her time, so definitely a sad thing that happened to her, but I'm excited to get her growing again. And the other corms you saw me peeling, I put back into the spot there in the little vessel. So it'll be growing and sprouting in some time. I have so many allocations here that I'm gonna be doing in pond. I'll have to do like an allocation pond transfer day. So that is the little update in here. Yeah, hopefully next week the flooring can get finished. I think it's gonna be Friday next week. So today's Saturday, so six more days they can finish the flooring and I can push that shelf back and kind of rearrange in here a little bit more. And then I'm planning on getting, taking some more plants out. I really need to create more space in here, but it just, it feels so much better not having the carpet. I just can't tell you how it makes me feel. It just feels more spacious and open. And I just, I don't know. I wish I had got it in sooner, but it is okay. I'm just excited for it to be done. And yeah, I don't know. It just makes me so happy <laughs> having actual floor in here. Leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.